7 ways to achieve massive bokeh. Welcome to my small living room studio that I just set up. It features some Christmas lights, an ironing table, a small green dinosaur and a lamp. All set up so that we can investigate different ways to achieve the most extreme, most massive, most plentiful bokeh ever. Let's go! Way 1. Focal length. So first I'm gonna use this 150mm macro lens and I'm gonna set the aperture to 2.8 and let's see what kind of bokeh we can get with this setup. Yep, looks pretty nice. Nice big bokeh balls in the background. Now I'm switching to a 50mm lens, the Canon f1.8 STM and I'm gonna set the aperture to the same as before and try to take a picture with the dinosaur in the same position and size in the picture like that and as we can see uh, the difference in bokeh is quite remarkable the bokeh is much more plentiful on a longer focal length than on a shorter one with all the other settings the same. Way 2. Aperture. So I'm guessing this method of increasing your bokeh is the most familiar to most of you. First I'm taking a picture here at aperture f3.5. And we have some bokeh in the background. And then I'm increasing the aperture, or rather decreasing, to 7.1. And let's see the difference if we place the dinosaur in exactly the same position. As you can see, the bokeh, it's almost gone. Quite a big difference. So, bigger aperture, more plentiful bokeh. Way 3. Distance to subject. So here I'm gonna use my 150mm again. And I'm gonna use the same aperture and all other settings the same. And I'm gonna try different distances to the subject. First, far away. We have some bokeh. And then I'm moving closer. And yeah, the difference is quite striking. The bokeh is so much more plentiful and smoother and the bokeh balls are bigger if I'm close to the subject. Way 4. Distance to background. So in the same way that the distance to the subject affects the bokeh, the distance to the background affects it as well. I'm going to use my 50mm here and first I'm taking a picture at the same distance to the background as usual, it looks like this. And then I'm moving the whole setup so that the background comes farther away. And yeah, the bokeh is so much nicer, so much smoother and creamier when we are a bit further from the background. The image on the left here is the one with the most distance to the background and as you can see only a couple of meters makes a big difference. Way 5. Sensor size. The bigger your sensor, the smoother the bokeh. This is with a full frame sensor, a 35mm, and this is the same image taken with an iPhone that has a very small sensor in comparison. And all the other settings are the same, the aperture is the same, and the focal length equivalent is roughly the same. And as you can see, there is quite a big difference in bokeh.
Way 6 Panorama Bokeh. So as I've already shown you in this video, to get nice bokeh you need to be up close to your subject. But that way it's really hard to get a big background that is all bokeh-ish and nice. But this little trick you can get that. Uh, simply put your focus to manual and then take shots both on your subject and all around it. Try to cover a big area. Then in Lightroom you mark the photos, you do lens corrections and then you use the merge feature and you create a panorama from your photos. This takes a few minutes but I've sped up the process here so you don't have to wait as I did. And then pretty soon you will have this image with all the photos stitched together. Then you just do an auto crop and uh, wait a few more minutes, at least if you have a pretty slow computer as I'd have. And voila, you get this nice photo with a very big bokeh background. And this is an effect that is pretty much impossible to get with uh, just taking a photo with a normal lens. Way 7 Photoshop Blur Yeah, I know it's cheating. So, what if all else fails? Then you can do as many professional photographers seem to do. You just open up your image in Photoshop. You have some bokeh, but not enough. And uh, then you use some tool the, to mark your subject as well as possible. I'm using some kind of magic thing here. Okay, that will have to do. Then you take modify expand and you expand the selection a little bit. And then you do feather of the same amount of pixels so that you get a roundness to your selection. And then you can just go wild with Gaussian blur like this. And you will have an increased bokeh which looks kind of realistic if you don't take it too far. Pretty nice, huh? So these were my 7 best tips to achieve massive bokeh. If you want to buy the stuff I'm using to make my videos, see the links in the description. Want to see future videos perhaps? You know what to do. See you soon again.